What do you think about those new batteries that we got a couple years ago? I actually want to make a video about that. How mm -hmm. much. I like it. So maybe we should do a video. Yeah. Maybe right you know now. What? Let's start the water maker now. How about that? Um. Ooh, can we better start. Who cares about the batteries? We can always start the water maker. We don't even have to check that anymore. And that's only, I don't know, a tiny, tiny part why I like it so much. Look, I want coffee. So it's only minus 29 because we're, we've got so much solar on. Yeah, the solar too. I'm more concerned about coffee, not the water to make it. <laughs> and that was never the case. In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. And putting on those solar cells, that was really huge boost for us. So, but let's talk more why we like our batteries so much. Okay, the pressure is on 60. And we're gonna taste it. Might as well fill up one of these while we're at it. All good. We thought that our battery is supposed to last four years. It was about three and a half years because we got our AMG batteries the same time as we purchased Aquarius. That was in 2017 January in Martinique. I thought getting AGM rather than regular batteries, not lithium, but regular batteries, already was a huge improvement because every time when we start Aquarius or leave Aquarius for a little bit, we don't need someone to pay them to come over and refill the batteries with a distilled water. So I thought getting AGMs and solar was a game changer. And it was. Our previous boat owner, he said, man, if I knew how much big difference a solar panel makes, he would have put it himself. Our previous boat owners, before they had AGM batteries and solar panels, they ran Genset twice a day, in the morning and in the evening, for how many hours? Probably two. Two hours. So four hours every single day. I would have to calculate how much that would cost, just in diesel. So, that already was a huge change. But the lithium batteries, it's another level. So does it make life easier for you? Oh God, yeah. I even was afraid to use a vacuum cleaner because it was like I would I would have to like make sure that all the floors are clean so I can just go and vacuum as fast as I can because it uses a lot of power. And uh, the other thing which is very nice to me, when we have guests, especially more than one, for example, uh, in Thailand we had two guys coming over. And uh, so we had two guys coming over and I didn't have to tell them, oh, don't use this kettle. This kettle is only when this and this. Don't go and shut off your lights. Don't do this, don't do that. Because I don't want to be this bitchy, but I can tell you, 
if those AGM batteries were overused more than it was supposed to, it was leaving a huge damage. When these guests leave, remember the video I made for the people who come as a guest? I talked in depth about that. So no more, no more with these batteries. So let's start the AC. Yeah, baby, the coffee is done. Um, Start the, yeah, that one. How about we close up all the windows and the doors? Uh, it just popped on, 55 amps, down to 38. The water is running. Now it's not in a bowl, actually, it still needs a little bit, but let's close up all the windows so it's actually nice and cool. So let's talk about the batteries. You so, actually really like the batteries. Very much. I wasn't um, super happy when you was about to purchase them because I thought it's just another thing that Ken wants to buy. Would you talk about Willis? And, uh, but at the end of being in Thailand, that happened during the COVID, when just the COVID started. Um, Ken got his uh, MacBook Pro 16 inch, and I think that kind of like helped to kill the batteries. Well, it did pull 100 watts while it was charging. Yeah. So, and then it was, the mood was down because of COVID. It was overcast because we were going into monsoon season. We were supposed to be gone by that time and be crossing Indian Ocean. So it was not enough sun for the solar. Um, and the batteries, like every morning, sometimes 7 a.m., you get up and first thing you go to look at uh, uh, how much is uh, battery left. And usually at the end, it was always we had to run the genset and uh, or sometimes even at night but at night it was okay because we would run also air conditioner uh, so it was kind of okay but uh, it was just like getting down the hill very very fast yeah we were running the gen set a lot and so that made life more difficult you didn't want to run the gen set because you're burning diesel and you didn't know at, at, there were times where we didn't know when we were going to be able to go get fuel. So burning the diesel was kind of bad, but uh, we got more solar that uh, we have on, on the boat now, and you can see that in the, in the videos overhead. And with, with the additional solar that we've got on, on right now, we're pretty much self-sufficient unless we want to make water or run the AC units. Yeah. And now we are self-sufficient. So Genset is not running and we're making water and the AC is running. So you hear two hissing, but no on the Genset. What do I mean by self-sufficient? On an average sunny day, we make five kilowatt hours with our solar panels. On a cloudy day, we might make only one kilowatt hour of solar power. On an average day, we use five kilowatt hours of power. So, as long as we have sunny days, we would not have to run the genset unless we wanted to run the ACs or needed to make water. So, on sunny days, we're pretty self-sufficient. Yeah, our genset's pretty quiet, but yeah. after a while, you just get tired of uh, burning the diesel. I think it's more burning diesel that I get upset about than actually the gen set running, hearing the gen set. We can run two, two AC units at one time. We can run this one and that one, but we can't run all three. We would have to run a, get another inverter in order to run more AC units. Um, at most, right now, we might use 125 amps off the batteries, and that would be what would it be like 0.09 C? So nothing close that could damage our batteries. 
uh, because we have so much battery capacity. We have 900 amp hours at 26 volts, basically, which is about 23 kilowatt hours, which is a, a ton of power for a yacht the, of this size, a ton of power. And uh, I think it makes the boat a lot more comfortable. I think we, if, you, if you want, watch our, our other videos about batteries. We have three or four other videos. I'll put a link below for those videos. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are a game changer for for us. Yeah. And I think it'd be a game changer for you. you the other, absolutely. The other thing I didn't mention yet is a washing machine. So before washing machine was, I was able to use only one the genset is running. There was no way around it. So it would be sometimes we want to run it in the evening so we can use AC cool off before going to sleep while we're making water and so on. But then you do the laundry in the evening and you're going to leave it there overnight. I mean, it's not a big deal and that's what we used to do. But now I just know, oh, we have enough uh, laundry accumulated. I just throw in, we wouldn't like try to schedule anything. So it's definitely super the ease of use. We, I don't think we're doing more laundry because of that. I know we're making definitely more water because of that. So when the guests come again, it's much nicer because now we can just run water pretty much any time, any day, of course, the best is when we have most of the sun during the middle of the day. But um, it's just so much easier, so many things. So these batteries have a, a smaller resistance um, when you're actually loading them up. So therefore, our solar actually can put more power in these batteries than they could in an AGM or a lead battery. So they charge faster. It's running like, gen set, the same case. Yeah, and running the gen set, I can charge them faster with the gen set as well. So if, to charge our AGMs all the way to the top, you would have to, you would run it for a couple hours at 100 amps, and then it would go down to, to a trickle charge, the last, you know, 20% or 10% that it's charging. And that's, it, it's kind of rough. It just you're just burning diesel for almost no reason at all because the gen set can make six kilowatts, but you're only using three or four of them, two of them sometimes, because now you can't charge. But uh, we have two chargers now. We can run them both at the same time. We can actually charge at um, before they heat up because the chargers, after they heat up, they, they don't charge as much. So our 100 amp charger, once it heats up, it'll go down to about 65 amps. And our 70 amp charger will go down to about 60 amps. So we can charge about 120 amps. 120 amps is what we charge at when we have both, both going. And then we can run a, a couple ACs at the same time off the gen set. You know, you want to load your gen set up and run it hard when it's running and then shut it down. So that's what we do. We run it, we run it hard. But uh, we can run everything that we want for the most part, unless we want to run three AC units without running the gen set. But that's not to say that we're not gonna have to run the gen set at some point because we're pretty much self-sufficient with the setup that we have. If we don't run the water maker for eight hours, and we don't run ACs. But if we do run the water maker and we do run ACs, at some point we're going to have to run the gen set because it, we're not going to keep up and we'll have to fill our batteries back up with the gen set. But, you know, that said, it's not a bad thing because you have to use your gen set or you lose it. So once a week, we run our gen set for maybe four hours. And that's it, once a week. Yeah. The other thing I haven't mentioned in the kitchen department, uh, being in New Zealand, a lot of time we spent in the marina. I don't know why, but it just happened and it was cold. 
So it was really nice to make all these soups and stews I bought in pressure cooker and I'm able to use it now. So during the passages, I'm so happy to use it for making rice, making curries, making stews, because it doesn't make the mess in the kitchen, especially the rice. I don't know somehow it just always overruns. Um, so it's very nice and it tastes, I love how it tastes. So it's another add-on to the use, having so much uh, power. And the other good thing about that is you're not bur burning your gas. Propane. And the, yeah, the propane. So the thing about propane is if you have to go get the bottles filled, it's, a, it's painful because you have to take the bottle, you have to take it down someplace, you never know where to get it filled. Then you have to find the place and then get it filled and then bring it back aboard. Yeah. But, Many uh, times we had to take a cab just for, to get the, the propane. Then in New Zealand there was issues where, oh, your, your bottles are not certified to this date or past that date, it's not a certain fit. And uh, it's just a whole fit with all that propane. We don't use as much gas as we used to use, and, and that's a benefit as well. Because now the, the bottles last six months, we have two of them, so they last us a year. It was uh, four months ago or five months ago, no, about four months ago, we got back on board Aquarius. We had two full bottles, and we haven't even used one up yet. But we've been very spoiled in Thailand eating not at home and in Maldives during the rally we barely <laughs> I know the Maldives rally was awesome if you didn't see the videos on that you should we loved the rally we did yeah but coming back to the batteries it's um I think there is still a bunch of the little things that you don't add up you know just running the ventilators like if I'm in one room and I'm leaving I don't have to reach out and turn it off. I just know it's probably better to leave it on because when we use too little current, you tell that it just shuts off and turns on. Yeah, our inverter actually senses that there's hardly any current coming out and it will shut off and then come back on when there's a current draw. So if we have things charging that are fully charged, they don't draw any current but every time the power goes off and it comes back on, it makes a beep. Yeah. So then things start beeping everywhere because the power goes down and comes back up. It senses that there's no power. So then it shuts down again Then it comes up and then all these things pop back up and go beep. So yeah, it's kind of a pain. Yeah. But uh, if you leave one fan on somewhere, then there's a little bit of current draw and we don't get that problem. Yeah, we just got the Wi-Fi for Seychelles to upload the videos. It's like a home modem router. So that one, because we were not drawing enough power, it was just shutting off, turning on, shutting off, turning on, and we didn't get them. That was like, what is it? So yeah, running the spare ventilators, fans, someplace, it's not even a worry at all. Yeah, we just run one fan. But the biggest problem that we had with switching to lithium was the insurance companies. For some reason, the insurance companies think that lithium is more dangerous than the um, AGMs or lead acid. In my opinion, I think lithium is actually safer than lead or AGMs. They're, they're basically lead as well. But the insurance companies haven't come to that conclusion yet, so the insurance company dumped me. And uh, it was a pain trying to find another insurance company to uh, let me go through the Suez Canal. So that was a pain. But you did it. Yeah, we did it. We got it done. Myself using a little bit more water. I don't, I don't use that much water in the shower, but out, outside, after I go swimming, I use a little bit more water. When I'm washing the dishes, I use a little bit more water. Because I know that, you know, we have so much power, we can actually make the water. So I like to watch a lot of stuff on my phone, some on my tablet, and I use my computer 
only when I need to like do certain big things, um, reply serious emails, and definitely when I make videos. But most of the time, I would be on my phone. Ken likes his computer a lot, and that baby sucks up power. Are you worried about it charging now? Were you before? Yeah, it's 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 awesome. It, it's a game changer. So except for the insurance, I would say everybody should switch over. And we did it for less than uh, buying AGMs in Thailand. Yeah. So about the prices, you want to talk about the prices? Yeah. If we were to buy Battleborn batteries, we would have been spending I don't know eighteen thousand dollars to get as much power as we have. We wouldn't be spending. <laughs> we, yeah, we wouldn't have got that much power. But, and we uh, wouldn't change it. We were thinking hard about 9000 They were supposed supposedly giving us a little bit of discount, but we couldn't afford it. Oh, we still wouldn't have been able to afford it because the shipping over to Thailand would have cost too much. But China has a, a deal, or Thailand has a deal with China, where they don't, they don't, you don't have to pay tax on electronics. electronics coming in and batteries are electronics. So we didn't have to pay tax when we were in Thailand and the shipping is easy because it can come by train and we paid total about $4,000 for 900 amp hour at 24, 26 volts. It's 26 volts. So, and in order to get that with uh, Battleborn or some of these other battery companies, you'd have to pay eighteen thousand dollars. And uh, I, I just think that more people need to to know that you can do it for a lot less. I you have to really think about you know how you set everything up. But these batteries are just as stable as AGMs or lead acid. Um, you. It, in order to treat them properly, you know, you can do almost the same things to them, but you have to know that they're just a little bit different. So, you know, you, you don't want to charge them all the way up all the time. You want to keep them around 50%, you know, if you don't need, you know, that much capacity, like I don't need 900 amp hours all the time. So I'm going between maybe 65% down to 35%. I'll just cycle them, cycle them, cycle them there but you know I'm not going to be charging them up and then cycle them a hundred percent down to seventy percent because they don't like it they're just different you know it's a whole different chemistry but as long as you understand a little bit about the chemistry you know it's not rocket science you can actually treat them treat them well you don't need all the electronics to do it you just have to watch them you know charge it up Charge it to 75, 80 percent, and then let them let them burn down to 30 percent. So you're using 70, 30. I mean, it's perfectly fine. It's only when you do stupid stuff like charge them up and then keep charging them, hook them up to your alternator on your engine, and then run your alternator, you know, 28 volts, and then just cook your batteries for three days while you're you're running. Yeah, that could be a problem. So uh, I took uh, my alternator and took it off. Yeah, because we actually, these batteries could suck in the power compared to AGMs. AGMs would take so much when you charge them. But uh, when we started motoring around, we really felt that our engine is kind of like going a little bit hotter than normal. And uh, then we realized that we have a very powerful alternator and very powerful and very um, stretchy batteries that can pack up a lot of electricity or energy. So that was another kind of like a down thing that uh, our engine was uh, taking a little bit harder work, but then as soon as Ken disconnected it, the problem is gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I got to, I, I disconnected the alternator on the engine. I was gonna put a, a controller on it and I still may put a controller on it so that uh, it acts like uh, 
a normal um, gen set. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. I, I, I think I like it better having the gen set run once a week because you have to run it once a week and not having the alternator. But having the alternator is a backup. Having that alternator on that engine, all I have to do is put a couple belts on it and I get my 24, 28 volts. That is, is good. But uh, I don't think I want to run it all the time. I don't, um, because you're, you're running it all the time with the belts on there, all those, those uh, bearings have to you know, keep moving. But right now, it's just sitting there, ready to go. And uh, maybe once a year I'll run it. And then that's it. The other thing um, we should mention that uh, we were able to pack so much power for such a good price because those are custom made batteries. So we have so much space in our companion way under the companion bed. And I think that allowed us to pack so much power. I don't know, I don't, I don't talk all these amps, kilowatts and stuff. So. Yeah, she doesn't talk kilowatts. But I know how much the batteries are charging when we put up all these solar cells. That's good. All she has to do is look at the, uh, the controller. Yeah. And I do sometimes out of curiosity and, you know, just to make sure that everything is as it's supposed to be. Or it's still probably a habit to look in there. But that habit is diminishing soon. So, the Oscar goes to... L-I-F-E-P-O So yeah, those batteries are life-changing, absolutely awesome, especially for the, the price that we were able to get. So AMGs we bought and we babied those batteries. We took such a good care of them. We were expecting to get to get from them four to five years. It barely three lasted three and a half. And I said, at the end, they were going downhill so fast. I mean, it's impossible. And uh, these batteries, how long are they supposed to last? Well, the way we're cycling them, because we're cycling between, you know, we cycle them once a week. They're supposed to last. 5,000 cycles between, you know, to come down to 80%. Short so, answer? So in about 100 years, they should be at 80%. So these batteries were put in two years ago, right when the COVID hit. And the vote was left, nobody was babying them. They were trickle charged by solar probably. Yeah, they were trickle charged by solar and I dropped the solar so that I um, charged them to about 60% and just left them at 60%. Yeah. So can you imagine installing new batteries and leave them for two years without any monitoring, taking care of anything? And then you come back to the boat, you have guests. Babe, we had people monitoring the batteries. But yeah, but still, like, they were Every not... Every month. Every they, month, they told but me. But they were not, like, pouring the water and, like, adding energy or whatever. No, they just sent me the pictures and yeah. the numbers. So basically they were on them on their own, but yeah, you got the digits. So you don't have to interrupt me, but anyways, so can you imagine putting new batteries, leaving them for two years and then come back in Thailand. We had three guests in Maldives. We had one guest, so it's more extras and they are awesome. Yeah. I can't say enough about the batteries. Um, we did get a discount on the last battery because we got two batteries that were, all of our batteries are 300 amp hours at 26 volts. So we have three of them now. And so that makes 900. But uh, we did get a discount on the last one because we keep pushing them, but you know. Because uh, right away in that like Krabi Marina, you made a couple boats just to change them. Yeah. I got a, you know, they've got a lot of business through through Where us. Yeah. So they gave me a discount on the third battery. So I paid full price for two batteries. I got a discount on the, the third battery, half price. So total, I think we spent 
thousand dollars to get our batteries and you might have to spend four thousand eight hundred dollars to get batteries but if you buy them anywhere else um, you may or may not get a great deal you may or may not get great products but from what I've seen the batteries that we got from lithium valley have been incredible batteries I have I'm 100% behind them. Contact Joey at Lithium Iron, uh, Lithium Valley, and tell him that Aquarius sent you. But um, they're good, good batteries, and it's a game changer on a boat because everything revolves around your batteries. So if you have Lithium Iron Phosphate batteries, or you have AGMs and you're thinking about getting lithium iron phosphate batteries, let us know in the comments below what you think of lithium iron phosphate batteries. Any cons? Any pros? Let us know in the comments below and uh, keep the dialogue going so that other people can read the comments and, you know, Maybe you have more knowledge than I do about the lithium iron phosphate batteries, but I think they're great. And also, do you have any, if you have uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, do you have any troubles with your insurance? Yeah, that would be a good question as well. Anything else goes to? I just, I can't direct a film if I can't get, like, my actresses to, like, do what I need You're them. not paying enough. Please. I hope, look, I already said that maybe 15 times. I ran out of steam. And the Oscar goes to... Ken Powers. Captain Thank Ken. Thank God. Because all the batteries have resistance, you lose power when you put power into the batteries and you lose power when you take power out of the batteries. You may lose 5% depending on the chemistry of the battery. Lithium iron phosphate batteries have a much lower resistance than lead acid batteries, but it still has resistance. If you use the power when you make it, rather than charging the batteries then taking the power out of the batteries you skip that little resistor twice if you like this video give us a like down below and click here to subscribe that really helps us and if you want to watch more of us click one of those they said they came from Spanish. Oh.